This is lecture five, estimates, errors, and R squared. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to interpret regression results from SPSS, calculate estimates from an ordinary least squares regression, calculate errors and estimates, calculate and interpret an R squared, and calculate and interpret an, adjust an adjusted R squared. Before I move on to new material, I would like to review some material from the previous lecture. Recall that we begin the scientific process by identifying a dependent variable and an independent variable that we think has an effect on the dependent variable. We run a regression to determine whether the independent variable has a statistical impact on the dependent variable. The regression analysis produces an equation, dependent variable hat equals b hat times the independent variable plus the a hat. B hat tells us the effect that the independent variable has on the dependent variable. If the independent variable has no discernible effect on the dependent variable, then B hat would equal zero. As the independent variable increases, the dependent variable stays the same. However, we expect the independent variable to have an effect on the dependent variable so we don't expect the coefficient b hat to be zero. Based on our hypothesis, we expect it to be greater than zero or less than zero. If we expect there to be a positive relationship between our independent and dependent variables, we expect that as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable increases. Hence, the coefficient b hat for this line would be positive or greater than zero. If we expect there to be a negative relationship between our independent and dependent variables, we expect that as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable decreases. Hence, the coefficient b hat for this line would be less than zero or negative. In the previous lecture, I showed you how to calculate an ordinary least squares regression by hand and conduct a significance test. For the rest of the semester, you will not have to calculate a regression and significance test by hand. Instead, you will use SPSS to do it for you. So it's really important for you to know how to run a regression in SPSS and how to interpret the results. This slide tells you the steps you need to go through to run a regression. Let's say my independent variable is GDP per capita and my dependent variable is net migration. I expect GDP per, GDP per capita to have a positive impact on net migration. To determine if this is the case, I will run a regression. To run a regression analysis in SPSS, you click on Analyze Regression Linear. You will put the dependent variable in the dependent box, and you put the independent variable in the independent box. Then you click OK. After you run the regression, this is what your results should look like. The first step in interpreting the results is writing your regression equation. I will show you how to do it based on this output. This first row here tells you all the statistics associated with your constant a hat. The b cell tells you what a hat is. So in this case, a hat is negative 182752.154. The second row tells you all the statistics associated with your coefficient b hat. Remember that b hat tells you the effect that the independent variable has on the dependent variable. In this case, the independent variable is GDP per capita, so this row tells you the effect that GDP per capita has on net migration. Note that in SPSS, I call GDP per capita var1, which is why var1 is the name here. The B cell tells you what B hat is. So in this case, B hat is 19.045. So if you recall, the equation for a regression output is dependent variable hat equals B hat times the independent variable plus A hat. So given that our dependent variable's net migration, our independent variable's GDP per capita, our b hat is 19.045 and our a hat is negative 182752.154, we have the following equation. 
Net migration hat equals 19.045 times GDP per capita minus 182.752.154. The next step in interpreting the regression output is determining if b hat and a hat are different from zero. We will do this through interpreting the significance test in the regression output. I will start by showing you how to determine if b hat is different from zero. Recall that the second row tells us the statistics associated with b hat. The b cell here tells you what b hat is. First, you should look at the sign of b hat. If it is not in the expected direction, then b hat is not significant and is indistinguishable from zero. So let's say you expected the independent variable to have a positive effect on the dependent variable, but b hat was negative. Then your b hat is automatically insignificant. You do not have support for your argument. If your b hat is in the right direction, then move on to the next steps. So the next step is to look at the results of the significance test for b hat and SPSS. This last column here, sig, tells you whether b hat is different from zero. If the sig value is less than 0 0.002, then the coefficient is significant and different from zero at the 0 0.001 level. If not, move on to the next step. If the sig value is less than 0 0.02, then the coefficient is significant and different from zero at the 0 0.01 level. If not, move on to the next step. If the sig value is less than 0 0.010, then the coefficient is significant and different from zero at the 0 0.05 level. In all these cases, you have support for your argument. The only difference between these three levels of significance is if your significance test met these criteria, then your results would be significant at the 99.9% .9 level. If your significance test met these criteria, then your results would be significant at the 99% level. If your significance test met these criteria, then your results would be significant at the 95% level. In lecture five, I only had you determine significance at the 95% level, but in academic articles, you're expected to demonstrate what level of significance you have. So I'm showing you how to do it here. Now moving on, let's say that your sig value was greater than 0 0.10. That means your coefficient is not significant and is indistinguishable from zero. You do not have support for your hypothesis. An important note before I move on. Anytime you see a sig value of 0 0.000, that is less than 0 0.002, so you have significance at the 0 0.001 level. <clears throat> so applying this exercise to our regression example, I expected there to be a positive relationship between GDP per capita and net migration. So I, I will look at b hat first to see what the sign of b hat is. It is positive, which is what I expected. So now I, I move to look at the sig value here. The sig value is 0, 0.000. Since it is less than 0 0.002, then the coefficient b hat is significant at the 0 0.001 level. Now, let's say you had a significant coefficient. Congratulations, you have support for your hypothesis. You would state that there is a statistical relationship between your independent and dependent variables. You would indicate whether b hat was positive or negative, and you would say at what level it was significant at. Additionally, if the coefficient b hat was positive, you would say as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable increases.
if the coefficient were negative, you would say as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable decreases. So following these steps, we would write, the results of the data analysis suggest that there is a statistical relationship between GDP per capita and net migration. The coefficient for GDP per capita was positive and significant at the 0.001 level. As GDP per capita increases, net migration increases. On the other hand, imagine your coefficient b hat was not significant. Recall that b hat is not significant when b hat is in the wrong direction or the sig value for b hat was greater than 0.10 you would say that the results from your analysis do not support your hypothesis. You cannot make any conclusions about the relationship between your independent and dependent variables. Now I'm going to show you how to interpret the results for your A hat. Recall that the first row in your SPS output tells you the statistics associated with A hat. The B cell tells you what A hat is. Is a hat different from zero? We will use the significance test to determine if it is. The sig column tells you the results of the significance test. Find out what the sig value is and then compare it to these rules. Note that these rules are different from the rules for determining if b hat is significant. If the sig value is less than 0 0.001, then the constant is significant and different from zero at the 0.001 level. If not, move on to the next step. If the sig value is less than 0.01, then the constant is significant and different from zero at the 0.01 level. If not, move on to the next step. If the sig value is less than 0.05, then the constant is significant and different from zero at the 0.05 level. If not, then the constant is not significant and is indistinguishable from zero. Also note that anytime you see a sig value of 0 0.000, then it is less than 0 0.001 and the significance is at the 0 0.001 level. Using the steps from the previous slide, when you interpret the constant, you say whether it is significant or not significant. If it is significant, you indicate at what level it is significant at and whether it is positive or negative. So applying this, ex applying this to our example, our sig value from a hat was 0 0.002. 0 0.002 is not less than 0 0.001, so we move on. 0 0.002 is less than 0 0.01, so the constant is significant at the 0.01 level. And the constant is negative since it, is a, it has a negative sign. So we would say that a hat is significant at the 0 0.01 level and negative. Okay, now moving on to some new material. In the next few slides, I'm going to show you how to calculate estimates of the dependent variable for individual observations from your regression equation. Recall that the regression equation is dependent variable hat equals b hat times the independent variable plus a hat. If you found that b hat was significant, then you could calculate estimates for each individual observation. Otherwise, do not do it as you don't expect your independent variable to have an effect on your dependent variable. So to calculate an estimate for an individual observation, you insert the value of the independent variable into the regression equation and calculate the answer. So let's say for observation one, GDP per capita took on a value of 10,000. If we inserted 10,000 into the equation here, we would get 19.045 times 10,000 minus 182.752.15, which equals 7697.85. Then we could say that if a country has a GDP per capita of 10,000, then we expect to see a net migration level of 7,698 people 
I am rounding here because of the decimal place, and it is measured in people. Here I have additional examples of calculating estimates. In this observation, GDP per capita is 340.93. So inserting 340.93 into the equation, we get 19.045 times 340.93 minus 182.752.15, which equals negative 176.259. And in this observation, GDP per capita is 3288.43. So inserting 3288.43 into this equation, we get 19.05 times 3288.43 minus 182.752.15, which equals negative 120.124. We would continue doing this for each observation. Note that you can check your math after you made estimates for each observation. The mean of the actual values of your dependent variable should equal the mean of the estimates. After I calculated all of the estimates for the dependent variable for net migration for all 178 observations, the mean of the estimates was 5,832.4. The mean of the actual values of net migration was 5,832.3. So these means are virtually equal. Next, I'm going to show you how to calculate estimate errors. Estimate errors just tell us the difference between our regression estimates for our dependent variable and the actual values of the dependent variable. The estimate error, e hat, is the actual dependent vari variable value minus the estimated dependent variable value for an individual observation. So, for example, Recall that uh, several slides ago, we calculated estimates for net migration for our regression equation. Now we can compare these values to the actual values of net migration. The errors would, act, would be the actual values of net migration minus the estimates. So for the first observation, the actual value of net migration was negative 381030. The estimate was negative 176259. So, negative 381030 minus negative 176259 is negative 204771. So, for the second observation, the actual value of net migration is negative 47889. The estimate was negative 120124. So, negative 47889 minus negative 120124 is 72235. You would continue to do this for each observation. After you calculate your errors, you can check your math. The mean of the errors e hat should be zero. This is because in regression, we calculate a line that is the best predictor of our dependent variable. The line that best predicts our dependent variable produces the smallest error in predicting our dependent variable. E hat having an average of zero means the errors are very small. Now I'm going to teach you about another statistic associated with regression. It's called the R square. Recall that in regression, we expect variation in the independent variable to explain variation in the dependent variable. The R square tells us how much of the variation in the dependent variable is explained. The R-square ranges from 0 to 1. 1 means the regression equation perfectly estimates the dependent variable. 0 means the regression equation does not estimate the dependent variable at all. This is the equation for the R-square. It is 1 minus the sum of the squared errors divided by the sum of the squared deviations from the mean. I will show you how to calculate this statistic in the next few slides using the net migration GDP per capita regression. The first step in calculating the R-square is calculating the estimate errors. We already did this a few slides ago. Next, we simply square the estimate errors. 
The error for the first observation was negative 204771. So negative 204771 squared is 41931162441. You would continue to do this for each observation. Then we sum the squared errors. Note that I did this for 178 observations. I'm only showing you the first four. The value was 75, 524, 501, 553, 633. Note that this value is the value of the numerator in our r squared equation. The next step is to subtract the mean of the dependent variable from each individual value of the dependent variable. So the mean of the dependent variable was 5832.34. So for this first observation here, the actual value of the dependent variable is negative 381030. So negative 381030 minus 5832.34 is negative 386862.34. You would continue to do this for each observation. The next step is squaring the values from step 4. So for this first observation, we had negative 386862.34. So negative 386862.34 squared is 149662470110.2673. You would continue to do this for each observation. Next, we sum the values from step 5. The sum of all of 178 values from step 5 is 88993309049981.7. Note that this is the value of the denominator in the r square equation. The next step is dividing the numerator by the denominator. 75. 524-501-553-633 divided by 88993-309-049-981.7 is 0 0.85. Then you subtract the value from step 7 from 1. 1 minus 0 0.85 is 0 0.15. Next you interpret the value from step 8. Our r squared was 0 0.15. We move the decimal place in the r squared over to the right twice and use it as a percentage. And we say that variation in our independent variable explains our square percentage variation in our dependent variable. Or in this case, variation in the GDP per capita of a country explains 15% of the variation in net migration. The adjusted R-square is another statistic you should be familiar with. It takes into account sample size and the number of independent variables. The adjusted R-square equals 1 minus 1 minus R-square times the number of observations minus 1 over the number of observations minus the number of independent variables minus 1. So applying this to our example, our R-squared was 0.15. We had 178 observations and we have one independent variable. 1 minus 1 minus 0.5 times 178 minus 1 divided by 178 minus 1 minus 1 equals 1 minus 0.85 times 177 divided by 176 equals 1 minus 0 0.85 times 1 equals 1 minus 0.85, which equals 0.15. Our adjusted R squared equals 0.15. To interpret this value, we move the decimal place over to the right twice and use it as a percentage. And we say that after taking into account the number of observations and the number of independent variables, variation in our independent variable explains adjusted R squared percentage variation in our dependent variable. So applying this to our example, we would say, after taking into account the number of observations and the number of independent variables, variation in GDP per capita explains 15% of the variation in net migration. Now, I will have 
I will have you calculate an R squared and adjusted R squared, but for the most part, you will be using SPSS to calculate an R squared and adjusted R squared. This is an example of a regression output from SPSS that tells you the R squared and adjusted R squared. Now the R square is a general measure of how well a regression model estimates a dependent variable. Recall that when the R square is close to zero, the regression equation does not estimate the dependent vari variable very well. And recall when the R square is close to one, the regression equation perfectly estimates the dependent variable. However, if our R square is high, which indicates that our independent variable is explaining a lot of the variation in the dependent variable, this does not mean our independent variable is consistently explaining variation in our dependent variable. For example, here is a graph of the predictions and errors for net migration. The red dots represent the errors. The closer the red dots are to zero, the smaller the error is. As you can see, at low levels of GDP per capita, most of the errors are negative. Somewhere soon after, the estimates get closer to zero, meaning that between a couple thousand and 25,000 GDP per capita, the model pr predicts net migration pretty well. But after 25,000 GDP per capita, the errors get much, much larger. So GDP per capita is a good predictor of net migration here, but a poor predictor here and here. For the rest of the course, we will address issues like these and how to deal with them.